Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I'm bringing you today's word for December 2nd, 2014. This message is part of a series entitled Grace-Based Success, where we have been learning how to win in life, how to succeed, and how to do it God's way by his unearned and amazing grace. And I trust that you've been blessed by the series so far. So we're going to pick up the story where we left off yesterday, and the title of today's message is Our God Can Be Trusted. For you to walk by faith, for you to access God's grace, you have to believe in him. You have to trust him. You got to get to the point where you trust him with your whole heart. How can you exercise faith in a God you do not trust? So let's get into the message. We're gonna, today we're going to cover Genesis chapter 46, uh, verse 28, all the way through the end of the chapter, and then chapter 47 up to verse 6. Uh, so Joseph's family, as we know, arrived in Egypt. And when they got there, Joseph was waiting on them. And uh, when they arrived, the Bible says, I must go tell, this is what Joseph told his family. All right, guys, you're here. I got to go tell the king that you've arrived from Canaan. And I'm going to tell him that you're shepherds and that you brought your sheep, goats, cattle, and everything else you own. That's sad right there. Because the king said, listen, when you, when you go tell your family to come. And when they come, they don't need to bring anything. I'm the king and I'm going to take care of everything they need. Obviously, they didn't believe the king. And they didn't trust his word. So they brought everything that they owned. So they show up there. Then he said, listen, the king, he's going to then ask you, what do you guys do for a living? And when he asks you, I need you to tell him, look, we're shepherds and we take care of sheep. And that's, that's the only thing we've ever done. Because if you tell him this, then he's going to send you out to, there to the land of Goshen because that's the best land for sheep. That's also sad because the king already said he was going to give them Goshen. The king already said, hey, you go tell your family to come and I'm going to give them the best land, the land of Goshen. If he already said that, then why are they trying to manipulate the king into giving them what he already promised? And it's really sad because even Joseph with his own mouth in Genesis chapter 45, verse 10 said to his brothers, you will live near me in the land of Goshen, in the region of Goshen. So he had said this, but obviously he didn't really believe it. He didn't have full confidence that Pharaoh would do what he said he would do. So Joseph took five of his brothers to the king and they said, our father and brothers have come from Canaan. They have brought their sheep, goats, cattle, and everything else they own to the land of Goshen. They, they, <laughs> they wanted to, to preposition themselves. Listen to what happened. They got there. They took all their stuff to the land of Goshen. And then they go tell the king, hey, listen, we're here. We brought all our stuff. We got sheep and cattle and goats and, and everything we own. And guess what? Right now, we've already kind of prepositioned ourselves in the land of Goshen. They, they were thinking they were doing this to kind of put some pressure on Pharaoh to give them Goshen, to give them the land that he already promised to give them. They, this, was, this was Joseph and his family devising a plan to attempt to manipulate the king to give them what the king already decreed that they could have. This is ridiculous. The king said, listen, he did say, so what do you guys do for a living? And they said, well, sir, we're shepherds. Our family has always raised sheep. But in our country, the pastures dried up. And so uh, we had to leave. And we've come here and we, have, we are currently in the region of Goshen. So please, this is what they said. Please let us live in Goshen. They were pleading with the king to give them what he already said they could have. So Pharaoh was gracious about it. He was a king. He didn't get upset. Uh, he probably knew what was going on. He said, look, it's good that your father and brothers have arrived. I will let them live anywhere they choose to live in the land of Egypt, anywhere in my kingdom they can live. But I suggest that they live in the land of Goshen because that's the best part of our land. I would like for your finest shepherds to watch over my own sheep and goats. Listen, he's saying, look, you can have whatever you want. And matter of fact, I have sheep and goats too. And since you guys are so good at it, I would like for your finest shepherds to watch over my sheep and goats. The king was gracious about it, even though Joseph and his family were conniving and trying to devise a plan to get what he already promised them. So what does this mean to you today? Listen, I have five things to share with you. I believe it's going to be a blessing to you. Number one, Pharaoh offered the best land in his kingdom, which was Goshen, to Joseph and his family. And Pharaoh offered this by grace. This was an act of Pharaoh's will. The king's will uh, uh, said, listen, I want you to have the best. 
This was an act of his will. This was an act of his grace. Joseph's family did nothing to earn it or deserve it. And that's exactly how God offers us his precious promises. He promises us things and he promises us whatever he promises us by grace, unearned, unmerited, completely by grace. We did nothing to earn or deserve the fact that he promises us things. Number two, although Joseph was already a recipient of Pharaoh's grace before, because it was this same Pharaoh that promoted him from prisoner to prime minister in a moment, it's obvious that Joseph was not convinced that Pharaoh would be true to his word. So Joseph and his family devised a plan to attempt to manipulate the king to give them what he already promised. So listen, look at me. Please don't treat God like that. God is a God who can be trusted. If God promised you something, then he will be true to his word, period. Number three, in order to accept God's grace and to pursue his promises by faith, you must believe that God is a God of his word. If you question his word, then your faith is going to fail. But there's no need to question God or his word. Men might lie, but the Bible says God cannot lie. Titus 1 and 2. Men might renege on their word, but God never will. The Bible says God is not a man. He will not lie. God is not a human being. His decisions do not change. If he says he'll do something, then he'll do it. If he makes a promise, then he will do what he promised. Numbers 23 and 19. Number four. God will not take back. Listen to me. God will not take back what he promised you. He's not like, like us down here. Let's look at something Paul said in his letter to the church at Rome. This is Romans 11 and 29. I'm going to read this to you from three different translations. Listen, easy to read translation says this. God never changes his mind about the people he calls. He never decides to take back the blessings he's given them. Message Bible. God's gifts and God's call are under full warranty, never canceled, never rescinded. New International Version. For God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. His gifts and his call, they are irrevocable. He would never revoke them. He would never take it back. God doesn't do us like people do us. You got to get this down in your heart so you can truly trust God. Number five and finally, you can't have faith in a God you do not trust. It is obvious that Joseph did not trust Pharaoh, which is why he attempted to manipulate the king. But you cannot be like Joseph when you're dealing with our God. If you're going to exercise faith in a God that you cannot see, then you must trust him with your whole heart. It is your unyielding trust that becomes the foundation for your faith. So let's close this out with a declaration of faith and, and let's enter into this day strong. Say, Father, I thank you for teaching me about your grace and also my requirement to live by faith. You made plans for me before the world began. And you made those plans by grace. You now require me to believe your plans and to pursue the completion of them with my faith. For my faith to be strong, I must get to the point where I trust you with my whole heart. I declare that I do. I trust you. Even when I don't know what you're doing, I trust you, not only with my life, but with the lives of my family members. I trust you, not only with my present, but also with my future. I trust that you have my best interest in mind. So when you promise me something, I have no reason to doubt you. I trust when you give me your word. I have no reason to question it. I am a believer and not a doubter. I live by faith and not by fear. I trust you, Father. I believe you. I have faith in what you've promised me. I'm confident that I will arrive at your desired destination for my life because my success is rooted and grounded in your grace and in your commitment towards me and not necessarily in my faith or in my performance towards you. If my success were dependent solely on my performance, then I would have reason to doubt. But my success is dependent on your grace, so I have no reason to doubt. I am at peace. I know I will win in life. I know I will succeed. Not because I'm so good, but because you're so good, and because you are a God who can be trusted. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Apply it 
and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org, sign up so that you get the messages and they will be a blessing to you. Listen to me as you go into this day. Remember, God is a God who can be trusted. God bless you.